I'm the Global Runner and I am 50 years old and I just ran a 238 marathon and my plan is to run sub 230 by the end of the year. In today's video I'm going to give a training update, I'm going to go through a novel strength session I do and I'm going to get some advice from a professional on a strength routine. Now before I explain why I'm stood on the hill above Calgary, I wanted to give a quick update on my training three weeks after the Carmel Marathon. The plan for this block had always been to work on strength and speed and recovery getting ready for the next training block. But I really was struggling with the speed a little bit and so I backed off and I've done way more cross training this block and significantly less speed and less running with a view to making sure that I'm fully recovered. So the focus this week has been on strength training and making sure that I'm fully recovered. So I've been doing a ton of exercises designed to work on my mobility and my strength. And I've even thrown in a few plyometric exercises that I've never used before, just trying to mix things up because it's always best to experiment in the off season. So I have decided to come to the hill above Calgary and I'm wearing this rather fetching waistcoat, which is 10 pounds of weight. And over here, we have 167 stairs. So I'm gonna do some sets, and one set I'll be running up, easy pace, touching each step, one step at a time. And the second part of the set, I will be walking up, but I'll be doing two steps at a time, so bigger steps. I've done this session a few times, and it's a bit killer. I'll probably only do three sets today, just as a nice introduction back into it. You don't want to overdo it. So this was a fun session. I really enjoy mixing it up like this in the off season, trying something new, trying something different. And if you could feel the burn in my quads, I think you'd realize how useful this session was. But even without that, if I told you that my heart rate at the top was 160 at points, you'll see that this is a session which is good both for strengthening the quads and also aerobically. So really good session, really valuable, really good for mixing things up. And I enjoyed it a lot. So that is it done. I've done the uh, hill session. It's sort of a hill session. It's more of a step session. It's great for the quads. There's nothing like the lactic burn that you get with that. Maybe uh, ski touring, you get the lactic burn on like that, but that really works the quads and you gotta be a bit careful. So I only did three sets but that's a good start to the strength training and something different, it keeps things challenging, moves things up a bit and it mentally it's good to try these things on the off season to keep yourself interested. So that is my sort of ad hoc strength training session. And next I'm gonna go to an expert who's gonna give me some actual exercises to do which he thinks will fix the issue. So let's go there. This is Tyson Plesuk from Movement Sports in Calgary. This guy is a wizard, by the way. So he's just showing me what I'm doing wrong with my gym routine to start off with, so that's good. Yeah. I love this one. You showed yeah. me that one, so if that's wrong, yeah. that's on you. Okay, <laughs> that, that, that one looks good. That one looks good. That one's just because, you know, you've got yeah, to get away from the beach. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one I got off Cam Levins, I think. Okay. Now one thing I'd say, like calf raises are good, but we also want to train the soleus, so okay. knees bent position, which we'll kind of review in a sec there. Okay. Because generally you don't really run like that. Yeah. With uh, the knees bent, it's pretty quad dominant. We want to see, and can you kind of engage that posture chain? Yeah. So Tyson's recommendations were threefold mainly. He wanted me to elongate my quads. He wanted me to improve my posterior chain and he wanted me to make sure that my upper back is rotating because at the moment the lower back is rotating too much and that might be impacting the nerve supply to the quads. So here are the exercises that he gave me. We got uh, 25 pounds in the backpack, so 25, 30 pounds. And then again, key, you want that knee bent? Yeah, really, I'm really trying to keep it bent and I really want to straighten it. Yeah. I imagine so, yeah. that'll come with time. For sure, but we gotta build oh, man, that. I'm exhausted. Yeah, so we gotta build endurance. So soleus, one of the most important muscles for runners that uh, generally aren't strengthened, because that's gonna help take some pressure off your quads. 
So yeah, so holding a weight, we're gonna load that quad and now we're gonna lengthen and strengthen a bit of that adductor. Yeah, nice. So again, we can open up the adductor, but we also wanna lengthen a little bit. Yeah, nice. So way we can fire up the quads. See how that looks good. Yeah. So this kind of warms them up a little bit. And then we're gonna switch. So we're gonna uh, right leg forward. That's exhausting. And in running, the quad's main job is to lower you down. So we wanna, again, build that and we'll switch to the other side. So this is a little bit of eccentric strengthening. So we want to look, work on lengthening and strengthening those quads. So often the focus is, is concentric. So we just get muscles kind of short and tight and strong. But again, the job of the quad mainly is to lower you down. So yeah, so yeah, kind of slow and controlled. And then again, as you get stronger, you can hold a dumbbell or, or kettlebell, even just at your chest. Kind of through that big tone and as hard as you can. So you can come up a little higher. But yeah, push as hard as you can, nice. Because that's going to be a key muscle to push you forward to knock a few uh, seconds, seconds off. Seconds of Yeah. So again, calf raises aren't bad, but this is more vertical. We need propulsion to get you stronger that way. we got to look at why quads could potentially be a little bit tight. Is this weak. a former patient? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We call him Blaine. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so the nerve supply to your quads comes from L23. Four. So basically, these guys here, and often when you run, when you start to twist through here, so this area of the back's not really meant to twist. So if we're twisting, this can start to happen over 42 kilometers. Yeah. So I can make the, the quads go weak and tight a little bit. We want to see can you rotate more through this upper back. So these are in a uh, diagonal, so they have the ability to really rotate. So this could be partly why the quads will get tight and weak. So we want to make sure that. This area can move on your upper back, so you get good rotation. And is that what you're seeing when I run? Yeah. See? Okay. Exactly. So uh, the nerves like a garden hose, supplying your, your uh, quads with uh, with power. But if yeah, this is going on, potentially can affect kind of down the chain. The theory I have on why your quads kind of fatigue is if you rotate to the right and left. Yeah. So yeah, so you can keep your hips square, and I'll last uh, you yeah, a little bit slower. <clears throat> All right. So if you rotate. Back and forth there. All right, so I'll show you on uh, the camera there. But uh, so yeah, if we watch where you're getting that rotation, yeah, most of your rotation's happening here. Yeah, this is where a runner should have their rotational. But yeah, if you can see, this is quite stiff. As much as you want to strengthen, I think another kind of underlying issue is if we can get you just moving a little bit more through there, well, which will take some of the stress off. You're gonna put the uh, roller just under your top knee so that locks your lower back. So yeah, so now we're getting rotation through upper back and less less through there. So called a book opener. So you wanna breathe when you're doing this so you can get that rotation. So it's gonna open up the pecs, open up the ribs and breathe in as you do it. So you're gonna hold for two seconds and we're gonna do uh, 15 on each side. So we can pro progress and add a little bit of resistance to the exercise. So three separate movements. Yeah, you're gonna rotate. So you're gonna reach, open up through here. You're gonna pull to your side. You're gonna lock the band in. And now we're gonna use these muscles to rotate you. So we don't wanna just get you moving. We wanna be strong in those positions. So same thing, we're working on eccentrically loading this quad. So yeah, kind of back. This is going to open up the hip flexor as well. All right, so here, so if you get a little step and again, you don't have to be on a huge box, but just enough. So we got the heel elevated. Yeah. So this is going to change the angle. And again, often runners, their quads get destroyed because they haven't strengthened in this range. Um, haven't done enough kind of downhill training, but this is going to kind of work. Yeah, perfect. Nice. So this is going to give you more bang for your buck than just a flat. So there you have it. Those are the exercises that I hope are going to give me another of the 1% I need to get me under 230. I hope you found it useful or interesting. Please subscribe. Don't forget to mash the like button and I'll see you on the next one.